Hey, good morning and good afternoon. Thank you for having me. And uh, I set my timer just to make sure I don't run out of it. And uh, hello everyone, I'm Yuri Maleshenko. I will talk about uh, change as a product. That is the title of my talk. And uh, I'm going to use a slightly uncommon, unusual approach to that. I will use hand-drawn slides and I will mark them up so it's more entertaining and hopefully more clear for everyone. And in this talk, I want to explore how we could use the product mindset uh, to get unstuck with our change initiatives, maybe get some insights um, and uh, do stuff better. And by better, I understand um, being more effective in how we introduce changes in the organizations. And um, next slide is uh, a bit um, of um, information about myself. Um, as uh, Mr. Marquetos uh, introduced me, I work as an agile coach at Danske Bank. It's, um, uh, it's a major bank in the Northern European U uh, region um, in the retail uh, financing, and it's the largest bank in Denmark. And uh, at the moment, uh, we are undergoing an all hands on the deck transformation. My personal experience with agile transformation and working uh, with agile mindset is the last nine years, uh, four of them in the financing industry, uh, two of them in this particular organization. And I have been working in different roles, um, ranging from a scrum master to a product owner. I was in I was responsible for uh, four agile transformations in the organization of different scale. I used to work with uh, startup companies, um, small and medium product companies, and uh, my recent years is uh, working with uh, large organizations. And uh, most of my talk is um, around the experience in the corporate environment. Well, I'm passionate about um, products, uh, digital products in particular, and I believe that our customers and end users, they deserve great products that uh, serve their needs and bring them value. And um, I'm a visual thinker, and you might have guessed already by looking at uh, how I present today. First of all, let's talk about how Agile implementation is um, approached by a big organization. So let's talk about this bank here. Let's call it the Acme Bank. And uh, what is this bank? Well, it's defined uh, by the products and services that uh, this organization offers to their customers. Uh, you find executives, middle management, employees working to get those products and services delivered. And uh, today, most of the businesses, they are heavily based on IT and uh, digital products. Therefore, there is a huge influence of the systems and data um, that support those products and services. And most of our effort today um, is uh, focused on getting uh, the new features and uh, uh, using uh, the, the new technologies to the best extent. We have processes, rules, knowledge, culture to support that. When we talk about agile implementation, um, what normally happens is that someone uh, around the executive's level say, hey, um, let's, uh, let's uh, do the change. Uh, this uh, other bank, ABC, uh, has done it. So we want uh, the same change. Let's do that. And uh, other people uh, hearing upon uh, that news, uh, they start assuming, yay, okay, this is going to be great. Uh, we will uh, finally do things uh, better. Uh, maybe there will be less bureaucracy. There are a lot of different expectations. Maybe even customers think, okay, maybe more digital products, maybe uh, more opportunities uh, to use mobile phones uh, when dealing with my favorite bank. And the way this organization normally approaches agile transformation is that um, let's say a new department is established and is tasked to to make sure that the Agile is implemented. Uh, these people uh, do the following. They start analyzing. They analyze like where we are today, what is our 
state in which we are the state a uh, they check with uh, the stakeholders of the change where we want to be the state b and everything is uh, thoroughly documented um, we create blueprints uh, we create um, the uh, executive summaries detailed reports um, yeah we we try to nail it right because we want to make it uh, one uh, one time first time right because it's a huge organization we don't want to make mistakes um, in that analysis we try to cover the gap from where we are today to where we want to be and uh, once everything is solidified uh, into those uh, papers and documentation um, then uh, we as as if we were software programmers we start programming the change and the programming language is powerpoint slides so we produce tons and tons of slides explaining exactly what this change is supposed to be then it's written on the floppy disks of uh, of uh, the communication and uh, after that uh, the all-in implementation starts and if you remember uh, those uh, w application windows for the process of installation you can imagine um, agile version uh, 1.0 is being installed please be patient and then this uh, plan that is probably spanning, if not months, uh, then years, is being rolled out step by step, phase by phase. And, and then we are in the middle of it. But then the world around us is not, um, is not static. It's not standing um, where, we, uh, where, where we had it when we were analyzing this uh, state A, state B. Uh, things are bombarding us, right? So last year... Uh, there was uh, the global pandemic of COVID. Um, well, but but even without such uh, big events uh, that are quite uh, definitive for the world, things are changing. New customers emerge. Um, old customers leave uh, to better uh, service providers. Uh, people come and go. Priorities change. Uh, we identify new technologies. And I'm quite sure that uh, it's just impossible to take into account all of those possible uh, changes. And uh, when the critical mass of the discrepancy accumulates, what happens is that you have a crash in your installation. So, me, the fatal error. Something went wrong, please try again, right? And then the installation was um, not successful. And uh, that's, um, that's a natural story behind the natural transformation in big organizations. And it leaves a lot of people frustrated. Employees say, wow, that's not what we have expected. We wanted more freedom. But the changes got stuck somewhere in the middle. And uh, it doesn't make sense because um, all of the bits and pieces have to be in place for it to be a successful change. But that's not what happened. We stuck in the middle. Then, um, let's say, the next year, um, we tried to introduce another change initiative and so on. So they are layered. Uh, so failures is layered upon failure. Something is wrong here. And when we look at that, and I specifically use the metaphor of software development, when we look at that, we can see that, well, um, hold on. If a change management is similar to developing software, why do we do the changes uh, the waterfall way? There is something wrong with that. So let's explore that a little bit more. Um, why do we change our organizations as if it was um, a software development project uh, rolled out uh, the waterfallish way? I would like to suggest two major factors that I think are in play. And one is, uh, I call it a hidden conflict of interest. Now imagine this is uh, our organization defined by the people in it and uh, defined by the product and services we uh, pr uh, produce to satisfy our customers and serve their needs. And uh, then if we look inside of this organization with the executive management, uh, middle management employees, there is something uh, my uh, good friend Andy DeVale called the fog of agreement. 
And uh, this is one of uh, the factors uh, that is causing us to misunderstand each other inside of the organization. So the executive uh, management, uh, they might have uh, really clear goals about, for example, cost saving. And that is probably the major agenda driving the agile transformation in their mind. But they are too detached from what's going on um, in the front line, in the trenches, where the people employees are the closest to the actual needs and values, and uh, their input is not uh, is, is often not re respected uh, to help uh, carve a better approach to achieve the cost saving um, goals. Um, on the contrary, employees normally expect a more humane environment. Uh, as promised by those agile transformations, but but uh, their expectations are sometimes not really uh, well warranted because um, there is something else driving the agenda, and that is uh, only deepening uh, their frustrations. The middle management, uh, the HR people, uh, different departments, uh, they have their KPIs uh, to uh, live up to, and uh, not necessarily the signals from uh, their side uh, can penetrate uh, to, to both directions. It's, it looks like uh, all the people in the organization, they have uh, uh, their own detached agendas from each other and certainly doesn't help to stay aligned and focused on what is important for our organization. And uh, certainly that could undermine um, the meaningful results from a change. The other factor here, I call it the misconception uh, with the people who are responsible for the change. The misconception um, in a way that they believe that the change is a static exercise, one-off exercise. What does that mean? Well, I just uh, described you a regular story of how an agile transformation goes and um, it um, is uh, grounded in the idea that the world around us is deterministic. So you could decide the blueprints for months to come, for years to come, and uh, carve your path toward that new state B in a, in a very specific way today and uh, predicting the future of where we will be in two months from now, six months from now, and, and suggesting those quite prescriptive steps to roll out. And um, if you're familiar with the Kinevin framework, with the thoughts from the dynamic systems, um, you know that the organizations are the systems uh, that are dealing with the complex um, and sometimes chaotic environments. And this deterministic approach just ca cannot survive. So why do we, um, why do we trust uh, the change management people uh, to 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 design the organizational transformation in the way that it's uh, done uh, through the prism of a static um, analysis of things. Um, on the contrary, um, my personal experience shows me and tells me that the organizations are dealing with the dynamic nature of things. Everything around us is complex. And uh, if we look at how people developed uh, products and digital products, um, the agile way, they embrace uh, the, the uh, idea um, that everything is changing all the time. So what uh, makes sense to fix is to have uh, a clear vision for where we want to be. And that vision defined uh, by what we understand by change, what, what is the product of it, and uh, what is the value that uh, we hope to achieve by getting there and then approximating that new state through iterations. So that is, uh, that is uh, the explanation of the second factor that um, most of the time people responsible for the change, they, um, they base their thinking on the static uh, view of the world and uh, while we should be thinking in terms of dynamics. That leads me to the next slide, uh, where we would uh, together explore um, the ideas from the product realm with regards to uh, how it could be applied to a change. So first of all, I want to look at the attributes of uh, what we understand as a great uh, 
product. Well, a great product has a solid vision, something that uh, we know exactly where we want to be, and uh, we know our customer and their needs, um, their problems, challenges, and we know what is valuable for them, and we design that uh, solid vision in the interest of their needs, challenges, and uh, what they believe is valuable to them. That defines the truth um, and uh, defines uh, the decision-making um, we are acting upon. And then the product is uh, supported by the team, um, and team it might be bigger than our classical understanding of the team. It can be multiple teams. But it's a group of people who are uh, empowered and uh, who are motivated to do the job. They have an interest in, and passion in getting this product uh, done. And uh, they also apply the iterative delivery approach. So they do not... Um, fool themselves thinking that they can see design everything up front and get a great product every great thing from the design realm is created through iteration so these people know how to iterate and learn toward uh, the vision by checking whether we deliver to the value needs or did we help uh, solve the challenges of our customer and also the great product in the end by serving the needs and uh, helping our customers overcome their challenges. That product uh, returns the value back to the business so that we could sustain the process, right? We, we need to be able to create an ecosystem behind it. And um, these are the attributes. Let's uh, now have a look how these attributes could be mapped or projected back to a change uh, initiative. So once again, let's have a look. We have our organization here. Uh, we have uh, the people responsible for the products and services. We understand our customers. And um, now we want a better organization. But of course, uh, a better can only exist when we know what is wrong, right? So the organization, um, when we approach uh, the, the necessity of a change initiative, has to be super clear what are exactly the problems that we're solving uh, with this change? Is that because our customers um, are switching over to our competitors and we're not flexible enough uh, to keep up with the changes on the market? Is that because our products uh, lack quality? Is that because our services are lacking adequacy in, in terms of the market standards? Or is that because uh, we are bleeding people and it's difficult for us to attract the talent? So we have to be super clear on that because uh, these considerations will define what is the ultimate value after we uh, uh, achieve the, you could say, the nirvana state of our organization. Uh, whose needs do we uh, cater for? Uh, what are the challenges that uh, we are tackling with this change? And then uh, once uh, that is understood, there is a strong ownership in this organization um, over that uh, change. And uh, that ownership uh, then produces uh, the motivated people responsible for the change. So pretty much the entire organization here is the synonym of the product team. Uh, they need to be uh, um, in charge of the change. They are going to be um, producing that product. So, I mean, we cannot uh, really expect a small fraction of this organization being uh, uh, overwhelmed with the idea that we are the ones changing the organization. We are changing that, all of us, and uh, we are both uh, the employees of this organization and the users of the change. So, that that's, um, that's uh, how I see the um, parallels with the product development here and then of course the most important part is this mindset of iterative approach to uh, the ultimate goal and um, embracing the idea that you need to at any moment of time understand what is the biggest problem you're solving and what is the smallest increment you as an organization can make what is that change delta you could uh, could uh, create with the minimum effort 
so you could generate the knowledge and experience uh, to uh, build up a stronger understanding how to progress further and then check against uh, those uh, assumed values and uh, needs and challenges um, as a measure of your progress. And we will talk a bit more uh, about the uh, practicalities of uh, this idea. But for now, uh, let's agree that um, it suffices to help you draw the parallels uh, between the product thinking and the change uh, management as such. And uh, these are the practical considerations where I would like to look a bit broader and uh, also refer to uh, some of my experience um, uh, working with Agile implementation for the past nine years. I would like to talk about uh, three categories of uh, practical considerations, uh, first of which is um, let's agree on goals and define the change the same way. This one talks uh, back into this uh, fog of agreement and we need to overcome it. And it starts with honesty. So let's uh, put uh, off uh, those masks. Um, we hide behind and yeah, Agile is going to be great for everyone. Well, yes, ultimately, but maybe in the first step um, it will not be great for everyone. Maybe it will improve here and there a bit. So we need to start this dialogue inside of the organization uh, to uh, call spade a spade, if you will. What is that we're doing right now and why? So that um, different groups um, and uh, categories of uh, people working for this organization, executive management, middle management, employees, HR people, risk people, compliance people, software developers, they understand um, uh, which interest is catered for right now and why. I mean, you can get quite far with honesty because um, people uh, are reasonable creatures and uh, they can sometimes sacrifice the lack for their personal need if they're given um, a clear and honest explanation why we're doing things this way. So create this transparent uh, dialogue inside of the organization to make sure that re really everyone understands what is that we're doing right now and what defines the change. The next category, I call it design your change for engagement and ownership. What I mean here is that um, I mentioned this before. Quite often you find those ivory tower formations inside of the big organizations um, created specifically to um, support, control and uh, oversee the rollout of change. And um, this can be the external consultants, this could be the internal people, it could be a mixture, but something is in common. Uh, it's a group of people really detached from uh, what this change means in the front line. Um, I imagine the, the employees close to products and services, uh, front line people, software developers working with a problem firsthand. I imagine them as people in those boats and uh, the, uh, you could say the transformation office or a similar organization as people with remote controls um, trying to uh, basically um, implement the change by prescribing everything. The thing is that uh, not only this uh, remote control has the effective radius beyond which these people can say, aha, I can, I can do it uh, myself now and then ignore everything, right? So it not only uh, that, but also that uh, creates the illusion that we are in control. And um, on the other hand, it can uh, ruin this alignment. So the practical consideration here, mm, become aware of this ivory tower effect. And again, embrace that as, as a fact and try to create uh, this, the control center similar to how they, uh, how they support the launches of um, uh, spaceships, right? They are not controlling the rocket as, as such, but they provide the data 
and the awareness of uh, the where are the other ships in, uh, in the high seas, what are the dangers, and coordinating instead of controlling. So go away from the ivory tower. If you're in the ivory tower today, if you are that internal transformation person, uh, go out and spend time with the guys in the trenches. If you're in the trenches, give the feedback back to those people. Tell them uh, what are the uh, shortcomings of such an approach. So the, the last category broken down into uh, four interrelated things. I call it embrace the product mindset. That's probably the toughest because here you might need to uh, unlearn and learn. But if you're already working with a software development the agile way, certain things will come natural to you. But uh, the first thing first is the empathy. You really need to understand who are the people you're, you're designing and implementing change for. Similar way you do the customer research and proto persona in product development, you have to know who are the people who benefit from the change. It's, it's, uh, it, it comes um, uh, without uh, any saying. It just has to be like that. Then the communication is uh, is commonly done in the unified way. Um, we are a large organization normally, if you are a corporate institution. And um, that means that you have so many different roles and departments and they have different agendas and different specialization. You just cannot roll out the same communication to all of them. You wouldn't talk to your teenage customer uh, uh, of your bank the same time you talk to a pensionist customer. Um, you would think it's um, it's just irrelevant to do like that. So why do we communicate the change inside of the organization to different groups of people the same unified way? We need to understand that they all come with different values, different needs. And if we really want their engagement and their buying, uh, we need to talk their language. We need to show that we understand what is the implication on their role, on their department, on their KPIs, and so on. So you really need to be smarter here. And the last two, they really come together. Um, I've been talking about this iterating uh, a lot. So I'll, I'll just uh, shortly repeat myself. Product thinking product development is all about understanding that great things are created from iteration. The iteration is not only about limiting a time before making the next uh, valuable step, it's also about learning. We don't know all of the facts around us, so it's better to make a step and reassess the situation so we could identify the biggest problems early enough. And the last one is tightly connected with this one. You cannot really learn unless you know what defines the success of your change. So you need to know what are the, the criteria of it. What is the value uh, that is uh, expected from the change? Uh, what are the needs and uh, what are the challenges uh, that uh, this change is solving as a product? So you could uh, use them to measure your progression through those iterations and understand whether that was um, a bad step, but you still learned something, or you actually got closer to your solid vision of uh, the new state. So you don't um, avoid the situation of uh, some employee um, in your organization asking a question, okay, we are implementing Agile, so what, right? That's what you don't want to have. These were the practical considerations and now is a good time for questions. And before that, um, I would like to encourage you to reach out and connect on LinkedIn. Check my uh, blog on visual thinking on Instagram if you have uh, an account there. And if you want to learn how to sketch your presentations this way, I have created a discount code for anyone interested check out my Udemy course with the uh, discount code called Empowering Agile 2021. The course is called Visual Thinking and Sketchnoting Bootcamp with uh, Yuri Malyshenko. Thank you very much for your time and interest. And uh, let's talk about uh, your questions now.